Hello friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So this week is going to be pretty fun, I guess, because I am doing a few Halloween things this weekend and Jared's family is coming in next weekend. That being said, I have a really ambitious TBR this week. I don't think I'll get through all of this, but this is what I'm hoping to read this week. So I am still in the middle of The Wishing Pool, which is a short story collection by Tanana Reeve Du. The reason I started this is because I also want to start the reformatory this week and there is a part in here i think it's part two and there's five stories and they're all set in gracetown and gracetown is where this story is set so this came out first so i'm hoping that these stories don't spoil anything and maybe i should look that up but there are different sections i think there's four different parts in here and only part two is set in gracetown so i do really want to finish this short story collection i'm actually really enjoying it i'm so glad to be back with tanana reeve Dew's writing she at the moment is for sure my favorite horror author so i'm very excited but also very nervous about the reformatory the good house right now is my favorite book of hers and i'll be buddy reading the reformatory with robin from robin reads so i'm excited to discuss it with her. We usually only successfully buddy watch shows together. Buddy reading, it's never successful. Is any buddy read that I do ever successful? Mm -mm. Mm. And then as you may know, I'm part of the House of Mass read along and right now we are rereading through Throne of Glass and I am on the Assassin's Blade. So I know that you can read the Assassin's Blade first before you read any of the core books or you can do what they call the romantic reader path. And on that path, you basically read the first three core books, read the short story collection and then jump into Queen of Shadows. So I am currently in Assassin's Blade. I am only halfway if that through the third story. So I'm on page 138. It's funny, I actually remember these stories so vividly. As I've been reading through them, I'm like, wow, I remember reading this the first time. Vividly remember what I was doing, where I was when I was reading these. I remember what I was thinking when I first read them because I'm having similar thoughts and I'm not looking forward to the end of this because it's very tragic and very sad. So not really looking forward to the end of that. It's funny, these don't fully read or feel like short stories to me. And I think that's why I'm able to read two short story collections at the same time because I'm not a short story type of girl. I don't usually like short story collections slash I normally can't make it through short story collections. Although I did realize reading The River of Silver that when the short story collections are about characters that I really love, I usually have a really good time because because River of Silver, hands down, is one of my favorite short story collections that I've ever read. For whatever reason, I also put Queen of Shadow on my TBR to try to get through this week because I figure I'll probably finish this today. I have some reading sprints a little bit later today. So I feel like I can finish this today and I'll start reading at this because I think we have three more weeks before we discuss this one, so I have some time. I just wanna get started on it so I don't fall behind. So yeah, we have a weird collection of books this week, but this is what I'll be working on. <laughs> So the TBR has already changed. Um, I doubt that I'll be able to get to Queen of Shadows because Erin informed me that she would like to start our buddy read this weekend and we decided we were gonna buddy read The Hurricane Wars. And I'm actually really excited about this so I don't mind pushing off Queen of Shadows, especially because I've been really in the mood for fantasy romance. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. Also, I don't fully know what The Hurricane Wars is about. I remember hearing about it and being interested in it and now I don't really remember the synopsis of it but I do know that this is a Ray Lowe romance, which I don't know if I've actually read anything and loved that. Um, I don't really know much about that ship in general because I, I don't watch Star Wars. I'm so sorry. I don't. Anyway, that's all I know about it. It also says that all Taliesin has ever known is the Hurricane Wars. Growing up an orphan in a nation under siege by the ruthless Night Emperor, she found her family among the soldiers who fight for freedom. But Taliesin is hiding a deadly secret. Light magic courses through her veins, a blazing power that can cut through the Night Empire's shadows, believed to have been wiped out years ago. That's giving shadow and bone which i'm so excited about i love shadow and bone i unabashedly love shadow and bone it was the thing that got me back into reading i don't want to hear anything about it <laughs> i'm excited i'm really excited jared yep where are we going parkins 
We're going to pumpkins. We're gonna go to this pumpkin place that has like all of these really cool carved pumpkins. And I have my spooky sweater on. I've got my ghost bag and I'm ready to go. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm cleaning what's new I mean that's I feel like that's all I do because I do weekly vlogs and I clean you know like once or twice a week and today I'm cleaning it's right before we're gonna go to the pumpkin patch so I decided to like clean up the house a little bit then we're gonna go to the pumpkin patch and I hope have an amazing time I love the pumpkin patch I think I said this in another video where I did like a 24 and 48 hour readathon I was talking about pumpkin heads and why I love Halloween so much and it's so nostalgic for me because I grew up around like corn mazes and I lived among farm towns so like pumpkin patches corn mazes Halloween fall festivities were very celebrated there was this place where everyone would go every year to go apple picking and they had apple pies and apple cider apple fritters apple donuts and the leaves change and it's really beautiful and I think people have a hard time believing that about California but Northern California is so different than Southern California anyway I'm getting really off topic but my point is I just grew up doing all of these fall things and my family really loved fall too like some of my best memories with my family are definitely during the fall my aunts often come and visit me during October and I have yet to be able to visit home in in October to like go to a corn maze and go to a pumpkin patch there. So Jared and I found this really big pumpkin patch in Southern California that I love going to. And it doesn't matter that it's so fucking hot, <laughs> like so hot every single time every single year that we've gone i still have a great time anyway the reason i'm updating disheveled like this which like when don't i update in a disheveled manner it's just like i'm at home i'm not gonna i'm not trying to look good for anybody no offense no offense <laughs> but i finished assassin's blade and i really enjoyed this i remember enjoying it my first time reading it i actually remembered pretty much everything very distinctly which has definitely been the case for the first two books and now the short story collection the third book i remembered vividly bits and pieces of it but not as much as the first two books for whatever reason i remember assassin's blade really well and i read it after air fire last time but maybe that's because air fire just isn't really my favorite of what i've read in this series so yeah i enjoyed assassin's blade they don't read like short stories I mean the short stories are literally in chronological order so it almost feels like its own contained story even though it's broken up as short stories it doesn't feel like short stories it feels like one collective series of stories that's leading up to how our main character Selena was put into the salt mines and so that's where you meet her in the very beginning of this series in Throne of Glass so you learn a lot of her backstory in Throne of Glass but it's often out of context which is why I believe that these short stories were published it gives you a lot of context to Selena as a character and how she got to this point in the story when you meet her in Throne of Glass so I do enjoy those stories and like I said before I'm not really a short story type of person but I think I like Assassin's Blade so much because it doesn't feel or read like short 
short stories. It definitely just feels like a prequel book that is weirdly broken up into sections that are supposed to be short stories, but it's chronological and I think I enjoy that a lot and I obviously really enjoy one of the characters that we meet in here. This character's plotline is so devastating and again it brings so much context to the rest of the series and it's it's really heartbreaking. I feel like I would give it a four stars. Apparently on Goodreads I never rated this even though I distinctly know that I read it. Um, I'm not sure what I gave it the first time that I ever read the book but it was probably four stars. I'll probably keep it at a four stars but the thing about this one is I don't know that I enjoyed reading reading it and maybe it's just because I remembered it so well but I wouldn't say this is something that I would go out of my way to continue to reread even though I would definitely reread this series again I just don't know that I would care to read Assassin's Blade again but I think it would be interesting in a future reread to read it first and then read the rest of the series so yeah I'm gonna finish cleaning and then we are going to the pumpkin patch so I should do that quickly because I actually you know I need to look presentable. You say you're a vampire, then you burn it in the light. Stuck watching movies, cased in the black and white. <laughs> I just got home from work. <laughs> I'm trying to find some decent lighting. I don't, oh, okay, okay, okay. I have spent the day on and off trying to read The Hurricane Wars and I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening in the book. The author kind of throws you in the midst of everything, like the world building, the beginning situation that I think is supposed to introduce you into the couple itself, since this is a fantasy romance and it's supposed to be enemies to lovers. And then there's like a wedding that's already happening and there's kind of a sci-fi element to it. I don't know, I am so confused. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to listen to this on audiobook because I read three chapters and I could barely tell you a thing. I can't even tell you what the main character's name is at this point. Like it's really going in one ear and out the other. So I think I'm gonna try to sit down and physically read it for like an hour and see if that changes anything for me because I was trying to listen to it on audiobook because I'm physically reading the reformatory. So I'm not sure if it's the audiobook or if it's just this book in general. So I feel like I need to physically read it for a little while and see how I feel and if I'm gonna be able to make it through this book but I'm really struggling right now. <laughs> friends so I want to do a quick update because I haven't updated in the last couple of days everything just going on in Palestine and in the world has been really taking up my mental space so I haven't updated for a while and I did want to update that I am DNFing the hurricane wars I DNF this at like 
30%. I really tried with this one. I really did. But the writing for me was not good and I couldn't get into it. Like she was so overly descriptive about things that sometimes I would lose focus on what we were even describing at that point. And there were things that just didn't make sense. I also think there were quite a few plot holes and magic system holes. So I just really did not vibe with this like writing wise, plot wise, character wise. I guess 250 pages is almost halfway through this book. So I was almost halfway through this book and I couldn't really tell you the plot. Oh, there goes my headphone. <laughs> I'm just really sad. I desperately wanted to love this. I desperately was hoping that this was going to be a new favorite five star. If not, just like a four star. A four star would have been great. But no, I'm DNFing it and I probably will never come back to this. But I did end up finishing The Wishing Pool and for the most part, I really liked these short stories. I mainly enjoyed the Gracetown short stories the most. So this was sectioned into four parts. So this is the four parts. And I pretty much loved all of the Gracetown stories. And then I really liked the future shock story. So Ghost Ship, Shopping Day, and the Biographer. As for the other two parts, I was really hit or miss with a lot of these stories. So I'm not sure how to rate this. I feel like overall it's a 3.5 because there were so many misses along with the hits. I mean, I guess that's just the risk you take with short stories in general because some are gonna land and some aren't. I feel like one of my bigger problems with a lot of the short stories as they ended so abruptly and I felt like I wanted more and I think that's just generally why I don't like reading short stories as a whole because I generally am left with the feeling of wanting more from that story. I also think short stories are interesting in the realm of horror because I'm not sure maybe it's just me as a reader I like that slow build with horror where obviously a short story can't do that for you. So in terms of horror most of these stories didn't land for me. That being said there's an array of what horror is in here. So there is the use of the black experience in America as a form of horror and then there's also like ghosts and haunting. So there's definitely a wide variety of types of horror in here which I really appreciated and I'm pretty sure the reformatory is kind of on that theme as well. Like there's a mixture of what the horror is in that book which I'm not very far in the reformatory so I don't want to say too much about it. I'm only like three chapters in but I'm already really enjoying it. I'm already like feeling a little creeped out but much like The Good House I feel like Tanana Reevedu takes a little bit of time to build things up to build her characters and maybe that's why I like her horror so much is because a lot of the other horror books that I've read there's not a lot of character building or character growth within the stories and I think that Tanana Reevedu has this great way of balancing character growth, character arcs, and the horror, which with other horror books I've struggled with in the past, which is why I think I really like her as a writer. But that is my brief update. I now have to go to work, but I'll talk to you. I don't know when my next update is gonna be, to be honest. Hello friends. The state of the world, everything going on with Palestine, like I, it's really overwhelming. It's taking up my entire mental space and I've just been trying to do the best that I can with sharing things online and mainly just use the tools that I have to lift up Palestinian voices. So I just, I feel like that's what we all should be doing at this point in time. There are so many books, there's so many podcasts, there's so many um, voices online right now that are talking about Palestine. That being said, I also ended up reading three different books in the time that I wasn't updating. So I read The Salt Houses, which is by a Palestinian author. So The Salt Houses is a family saga. It does follow a mother and a daughter and a brother, and it shifts between their perspectives for years. So I think this starts in the 60s and then it goes to the 1990s. And there's a lot of discussions about being displaced and losing their homes and losing their their homeland and how the brother in the story gets wrapped up in the military and for the most part he kind of keeps this under wrap from his family because he realizes how dangerous it is but there's something that keeps drawing him to fight for this cause despite knowing that he'll probably lose his life and even the daughter in the story she ends up getting married and her husband gets relocated to Kuwait and this is another scenario of them losing their home and losing their land and being displaced but our characters are also facing a war that's ever present and they're also facing the realities of never being able to return home and so you feel that really deeply within this narrative because this is fiction. This one isn't a nonfiction, but I think it definitely reads like a nonfiction. I think this book did a really good job of making you feel the realities and the heavy burden that many of these characters 
are facing um, and how that is so much related to what is actually happening. I hesitate to say that I enjoyed it. It's, it wasn't an enjoyable read, but it was very well written and I was very attached to the characters. I especially love the sister in this book. I really enjoyed her perspective the most. I would say that she was probably the main character. Um, even though we get different POVs, she was I feel like the most prevalent character that we got to read from and get to know. Um, and I loved her relationship with her brother. The next two books that I read are nonfiction. So I don't write nonfiction, but as for the Salt Houses, they, I'm not gonna write that, but I enjoyed it. It was a very enjoyable read in terms of, you know, the writing and how immersed I was into the story and the characters. And then I read On Palestine by Noam Chomsky. This is more of a conversation between people and this was written in light of Israel's most recent attack in 2015 on Gaza. So if you are seeing a pattern here of the long history between Israel and Palestinians, this really talks about that, that this definitely goes into details about what most recently happened and transpired and why they think this is happening, but also the long history of this happening and the occupation of Palestine. This book emphasizes the importance of Noam Chomsky talking about this because Noam Chomsky is a Jewish man and there is a lot of discussions about anti-Semitism when discussing Palestine. And I really liked Noam Chomsky's perspective and hearing about the work that he's done generally on this human rights crisis. And what I didn't know is that this is actually a follow-up book to Gaza in Crisis. So then I read Gaza in Crisis by Noam Chomsky. Again, really great. Also very similar in the sense that they're talking about this humanitarian crisis, about it being genocide, and they're talking about this history between Israel and Palestine. But see, this was published in 2010. So again, it's just showing you this long history. In Gaza and Crisis, it's more history. Uh, they're still talking about the conversation of anti-Semitism. They're still talking about the, the conflict, you know, past and present. But they're mainly focused here on the war that's happening and the occupation of Palestine and uh, giving you that history. So I liked these books because it was very foundational. So now I recently purchased The Hundred Years War on Palestine, A History of Settler Colonial Consequence and Resistance 1917 to 2017. So I'm planning on reading that in my next vlog along with you know other books so speaking of that there have been so many people on instagram that have made really amazing graphics that are various different books that you can read to educate yourself i'll pop up a few of the graphics here i will try to link them down below in the description as well if you wanted to be able to screenshot them or have them on your instagram share them um i think you know as readers it's important that we read these things and we're talking about them i know sometimes it's hard to talk about certain things happening in the world because you don't want to be wrong but being silent doesn't really help either and most activists have just asked that you share information that you're sharing information and you're talking about it because that's the most powerful tool that we have right now so i know that most people don't like to talk about these things but i don't i don't feel like being quiet about it so anyway that is why this vlog you know changed rapidly and uh it's it's been where I'm at mentally. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading these books and keep trying to educate myself and do as much as I possibly can. Anyway, on that note, I'm gonna go. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. It's a weird mashup of things because at one point I was very excited about my fall festivities and then things got heavy. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.